I was in my room reading a book, then read Lime, when the mortars started coming down. Sergeant Horrocks ripped open the door and yelled, Grab your guys and go to the motor pool. The whole battalion is rolling out. Holy <laughs> the whole battalion. This must be big. One by one, the strikers were rolling out of the motor pool, ready to hunt down whoever was with us. Soldiers in the hatches of the vehicles were hooting and hollering, yelling their war cries, doing the Indian yell thing as they locked and loaded their weapons. As we headed north up Route Tampa, I was sticking out of my hatch behind the 50 cal, and I glanced over to the left side of the vehicle, at which time I observed a man dressed in all black with a terrorist beard jump out all of a sudden from the side of the building. He pointed his AK-47 barrel right at my pupils. I froze. Then a split second later, I saw the fire from his muzzle flash leaving the end of his barrel, brass shell casings exiting the side of his AK as he was shooting directly at me. I heard and felt the bullets whiz literally inches from my head, hitting all around my hatch and making a ping, ping, ping sound. All of a sudden, all hell came down around us. All these guys were in all black, a couple dozen on each side of the street, on rooftops, alleys, edge of buildings, out of windows, everywhere, started unloading on us. AK fire and multiple RPGs were flying at us from every single direction. IEDs were being ignited on both sides of the street. I kind of lost it and was yelling and screaming all sorts of things, mostly cuss words. I fired and fired and fired and fired and fired at everything. I saw a crowd of people suspiciously peeking around a corner at us. I pointed this out to Sergeant Horner. As he was shooting nonstop from his hatch, he told me to just shoot him, and he briefly explained to me these people have no business out on the street whatsoever. So I pointed the crosshairs right at him. Then I moved it to right above their heads and fired a burst. Just got them to disperse in a hurry. I could tell that they were just spectators. I was frantically scanning my sector when suddenly, about 300 meters away from us, I saw two guys with those red and white jihad towels wrapped around their heads, creeping around a corner. They were hunched down, hiding behind a stack of truck tires. I placed the crosshairs right on them and was about to waste them. For some reason, I didn't pull the trigger. Something told me I should wait for just one, maybe two more seconds. Then I saw another guy come creeping around that corner with an RPG in his hands. As soon as I saw that, I screamed as loud as I could, RPG! My crosshairs were bouncing all over, so I gathered my composure as fast as I could, put the crosshairs on him, and engaged him with a couple good 10-round bursts and some 50 cal right at him. Nobody moved from behind those tires after that. We had to return to Fab Merez as we were running extremely low on fuel, ammo, and water. So we all mounted up and drove back to the Fab. I was smoking like a chimney. My nerves were completely shot. I was emotionally drained, and I noticed that my hands were still kind of shaken. The stars were now out over Mosul, and I decided to go sit by myself and stare at him for a while. I was thinking how I was lucky to be alive. I've never experienced anything like the fear I felt today. I thought about that guy with that angry look on his face when he pointed the AK at my head and pulled the trigger. Sergeant Vance saw me sitting by myself and he came over and sat next to me. He asked if I was okay. I thought about that one for a second. I told him, I don't know. I told him how I wasn't really in the mood to roll back out for another inning with these guys and I also told him that. I was kind of tripping out about how not everybody that I engaged today had a weapon in their hands and that I wasn't really too sure about what happened to some of those people. Vance started telling me a little bit about his father who'd been in Vietnam and who had given him sound advice about situations like this. Put all the things that bother you and keep you awake at night and clog your head up. Put all those things in a shoebox. Put the lid on it and deal with it later. I walked back to my room, thanked God, passed out on my bed. I've put the events of that day in a shoebox, put the lid on it. I haven't opened it since.